Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news. I'm moving some videos around a bit, so we'll cover Burn Down and the Schedule Report on Saturdays in a single video now. I feel that that makes more sense as they complement each other and almost make a studio update together. But on Fridays now we will cover Star Citizen news that we haven't previously covered from throughout the week and just grab everything else we can. Sean Tracy appeared on a New Egg interview show with a rep from Intel basically talking more about their relationship with Optane, Intel stuff, all that sort of jazz. We actually covered most of it that was talked about in our hands-on with Optane video yesterday. It's also, however, been confirmed that the Alpha 3.0 is being tested with 60 plus players in a single server um, with performance of a 30 plus frames, good performance as well. Um, and that bind culling, which is a major network boost uh, to performance, is actually aimed for 3.0 if possible as well. There is a huge amount of performance and optimization that's going into Alpha 3.0, which is interesting for an Alpha to polish it that much, but it's going to be significantly better than what we've had with 2.6.3. It will be very playable. Uh, Alpha 3.0 changes as well. So in the latest ATV, there was some extra info on the additions to Alpha 3.0. The flight and traversal model model has changed a lot for 3.0. Ships have all been converted for the item 2.0 system, which means all the systems are actually interacting. There's no more 100% power to shields, weapons, and uh, SCM speeds. So SCM speeds have also been scaled upwards. So there's a much larger range of speeds now, back to having some of the faster ones now, uh, as well. So combat is going to be a lot faster and higher skill ceiling based. The quantum travel now scales for short and long distances in a non-linear fashion. So it's short jumps as well as long jumps. The drive takes time to ramp its speed up, lending to a curve in speed and acceleration where shorter distances take longer effectively per meter traveled. Basically, in shorter jumps, you won't hit your max speed. Quantum jump times are at longer distance well, they can take a few minutes. And the intention is for travel to be meaningful and to be a kind of has to be factored in if you're doing cargo runs, missions or whatever. But there are going to be things for you to do, ship repair, walking around your ship in general, Moby Glass apps that you can play around with, living areas to chill in. You could check the stock market out or the news checks and that sort of stuff. But also the potential of pirate encounters and literally parts of your ship um, wearing out due to wear and tear and you having to replace components. We don't know exactly how quantum disruption is going to work and how pirates will literally engage you while you're in uh, quantum travel, but we know that that's going to be in the game very soon. The afterburners have also seen a lot of work with the second stage afterburn or supercruise now being added as well. So once you're traveling at your max afterburn speed, the straight line, supercruise will kick in and you'll travel at higher speeds. All of this is intended to make traversal around the verse easier from 3.0 and beyond, but this has all been rebalanced and flight changes will continue to be rebalanced uh, for the item 2.0 stuff um, and the ship updates. All of this together for 3.0 makes Star Citizen an entirely new beast when looking at meta, combat and flying ships. And before you go, oh, well, I'm not going to ever catch ships if they're at these super high speeds or afterburner and cruise uh, modes and quantum travel mean that you can never catch a ship if you're a pirate or, um, or whatever. You need to get hands on with Alpha 3.0. There's going to be a lot of changes before 3.0 goes live and it is kind of being balanced for those game mechanics. On the dev happy hour this week, they showed off some outpost stuff. Also, it's good to mention that Happy Hour is now going to be weekly again, rather than um, fortnightly, which is great. Um, they showed off some cool little outposty things, but also answered some questions. EMPs will affect environments, so that will affect stuff on the ground. Didn't say to really what extent, but uh, probably disabling shields and turrets and that sort of stuff on outposts uh, for at least short-term um, attacks and stuff, and there might be ways of shielding that we don't really know. You'll also be able to um, partly work out what outposts and buildings are used for by looking at the externals of that building. This is going to help you if you're assaulting them, knowing where your um, power plants are before you attack them, or where NPCs or players might be sleeping, or what's worth looting in a very quick lightning raid before like UEE can respond or something. They did so something off pretty cool as well. They turned on uh, power in a room and the lights in a room by slotting a battery or like a fuse component into a power box. And this is the actual first time we've seen the actual installation of components for a practical use. 
And this is probably how some ship repair will work in basics as well. Components might blow, especially power relays and stuff, and you might have to slot a new component in, take the old one out, and that sort of stuff. Uh, but it was cool to see that actually operate the, the actual lights and stuff inside the outpost, and that that's going to be in 3.0 to some respect. Truck stop interiors were also shown, and they actually walked around the truck stops. Uh, and like outposts, they will use procedurally assisted generation. So we'll see lots of outposts, satellites, and truck stops eventually in the verse but for alpha 3.0 there is around 50 plus instances of outposts uh, or clusters of them on the moons so clusters might contain three or more or three outposts and a range of external gobbins like solar panels and that sort of stuff foundry 42 derby and um, the small mocap and facial animation studio showed off some of the heads that they scanned at citizen con for use in game as well i saw soundtrack gamble maya uh, leah paley and miserable g there and that's people I actually know the names of. There were some other people I recognised there. Um, and there was also a cool little post on Sandy's Twitter um, of work in progress on the new uh, Gallison tactical ship weapon as well. Every month we give away a ship for November. It's the massive Pioneer base building ship donated by our featured org, The Matadors. Uh, links below if you're looking to join an outlaw group. Um, all you need to do is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my Star Citizen videos during that particular month for a chance of winning. Um, are there any questions at all about Alpha 3.0 um, or Star Citizen's development in general? Do you want to know anything else about Star Citizen's? Drop in the comments below. A special thank you to my Patreons who allow me to create the amount of content I do. If you're interested in becoming one of them, there is the links to Patreons as well as everything else we've discussed below as well. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help me. And I'll see you in the verse. <laughs>